Welcome back survivalists. Today we're gonna to go over 10 camping items that you can use during a disaster situation. As a prepper, I love camping. It gives me an opportunity to field test a lot of my gear and equipment and to challenge myself by giving up a lot of those creature comforts and really just focusing on the essentials that I need to survive. It's also an incredibly relaxing hobby and I think a good mental reset every now and then. And luckily there's a lot of overlap between camping equipment and emergency preparedness equipment. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So first item on the list is gonna be a propane burner. So psychologically, there's something very rewarding and comforting about a warm meal. So whether you're out on a multi-day camping trip and you're just tired of eating trail mix or you're 12 hours into a power outage in your neighborhood, having a propane burner is gonna allow you to have a warm filling meal. On top of that, you can also use the propane burner as a heat source as well as to purify water. And that is a very important feature right there. If you're out camping, boiling water can be a last resort to purify some water. Typically you have some water purification tablets or a water filter, but you always have that last resort of boiling water in order to purify it. But also during many natural disasters, access to clean drinking water is going to be a challenge for many. During floods or hurricanes, you know, your well water or the city water can become contaminated. So having a way to purify large quantity of water can be incredibly crucial. So at the very least, I recommend that everybody has a few of these 16 ounce propane burners in their homes for emergencies. You can literally pick these up at Target, Walmart, Kmart, Amazon, any of those places. And then you're just gonna need a burner top for it like this. It literally just screws into the top here and you can set your pot right on top of here and bam, you've got a way to boil water in order to purify it or cook a nice warm meal for yourself. And you absolutely can bring these camping as well. And I do oftentimes bring something like this. Now, if you're out doing a multi-day hike, you can get a smaller propane burner. It doesn't have to be this large. And if you're just camping out of the back of your vehicle, you're driving up to a campsite, or let's say you have a large family, you can even get something like this. And this is pretty much the same thing, just has two different burners in there instead of one. So if you're cooking a large meal for your entire family, something like this could be very helpful. And something like this could be really nice to have in your home for emergencies. But having at least one propane burner like this in your emergency kit, I think is a great idea. And you absolutely can use this when you're going out camping with your family as well. You know, use this to cook oatmeal in the morning, have a nice hot cup of coffee, or cook some pasta or something like that for dinner time as well. So next up on the list is going to be water purification. And this is incredibly important if you're going on a multi-day hike. It's just not always feasible to bring all the water that you need with you and carry that on you. And there's also plenty of emergencies and natural disasters where you and your family are not gonna have access to clean drinking water and having some way of purifying water is gonna be very important. Now, when it comes to water purifications, you do have a few options. You know, if you're going out camping, one item that I like is these little Sawyer filters like this. This can literally screw onto the top of a standard water bottle and you can fill the water bottle up with water from the river. You screw this onto the top and just squeeze the water out uh, right into your mouth through this filter. There's also a couple of other different configurations. You can literally drink out of the stream with this. You can hook up some hoses to this and fill up your water bottles with this little filter as well. And these are actually really easy to clean. All you do is backwash it with a syringe and that removes most of the debris in there. So if you're planning on doing a multiple day hiking camping trip, these little Sawyer water filters are a great addition to add to your camping gear. Now, if you have a big family that you need to purify a lot of water, something like this, the Survival Filter Pro, uh, may be a good option for you. This obviously is a little bit larger, but this actually has a battery in there and you screw in a filter here and it automatically pumps the water through the filter and out of a hose. And this also has a rechargeable battery in there as well. So if you have some kind of solar charger or if you need to charge this in your vehicle, you could do that as well. And this is makes the whole water filter system so much easier and simpler. And if you're trying to filter multiple gallons of water for your entire family, having something like this may be a good option for you. Now, water purification is not one of the more glamorous or cool items of prepping or camping, but it is incredibly important and definitely something you wanna put some time and thought into. 
So the next item on the list is going to be a lantern. So when I lose power in my home, one of the very first items that I grab is a lantern. And I much prefer a lantern during a power outage than a flashlight, which is directional. You know, the first thing I typically grab is something like this. This is just a Coleman lantern I got at Target or Walmart or Kmart, something like that. And what's nice about this is it illuminates an entire room versus a flashlight, which just illuminates one area. So something like this could be enough light for your entire family within one room. Now this does have quite a bit of weight to it and it does take batteries and it's pretty big and bulky as well. So this may not be ideal for camping unless you're camping out of the back of your vehicle. For camping, I'm a big fan of these Luminades and these are solar charged and inflatable lanterns. Have a little LED lights in there so they're incredibly um, lightweight and they provide enough light for me, especially when I'm camping. And because they're so lightweight, it's really pretty easy for me to bring this along. Um, and they don't take up much space as well. And I never have to worry about charging it, right? I usually just leave these out or put them on the outside of my backpack as I'm camping, and that's enough to charge them up. Typically when I go hammock camping, I'll hang this on my ridge line, and this is what I use for a light inside of my hammock. I'm a big fan of these Luminades, and I think that this is a great item to have during emergencies as well, just because let's say the power goes out and it doesn't come back on for four days, right? You may run out of batteries in that time, but with this, you can charge it up in the daytime and then you have plenty of light in your home in the evening time. Another option is you can get something like this. This is by Hybrid Light. And once again, this has a solar charger on the base here. And this is essentially a lantern. It provides an omnidirectional light. Uh, but what's cool about this design is you can then compact it and you get a directional light on there. But typically whenever I lose power, I go for lanterns like this. And I like them because they illuminate an entire room rather than just one spot. And a lantern is definitely one of those items that you can use camping with your family or use during an emergency. So the next item on the list is going to be a battery charger. So I've talked about this in other videos and this is turning into an essential item for whenever I go camping now, I bring a large battery charger like this to charge my phones, charge my water filters, charge my flashlights, and charge my camera since I'm often filming while I'm camping as well. But this is also a fantastic thing to have during an emergency, right? You could argue that your cell phone is a crucial item during a power outage just because if something does go wrong and you need a call for help, you need to have a full charge on your cell phone. This battery bank right here can supposedly charge my phone 10 times. And what's great about this is it also has a solar panel on the back of it. So again, let's say you end up having a five day power outage after a bad hurricane. This would be enough that this could charge up the battery during the daytime, at nighttime, it could charge up your phones. So this could be a crucial, crucial item for you and your family during a power outage. This particular one also doubles as a flashlight and you can charge this up from a USB port. So you could go out to your car if you had to, charge this up, bring it back in your household and let your family charge their phones, their cameras, their whatever off of this. And these things are surprisingly affordable nowadays. You can get something this size for $30, $40. You can get something much smaller for $10, $15, $20 as well. But if I'm ever tracking a bad hurricane or bad storm coming my way, this is one of the first things I always make sure is fully charged, just so I know that I'm covered if the power does go out. So the next item on the list is gonna be a good multi-tool. And a multi-tool is just one of those general purpose items that you are almost guaranteed to find a use for during an emergency situation or when you're out camping. The truth is nothing ever goes to plan, things always break, and you need to have the right tools on you in order to fix those challenges when they emerge. And that's where a good multi-tool comes in. I'll be honest, most of the time I just use the pliers and the screwdrivers on here and then sometimes the a uh, knife that's on here as well. Has a lot of other functionalities like scissors and stuff that I don't really use that often. 
but you'd be very surprised how often you need a good pair of pliers or how often you just need a screwdriver and just having one on you is incredibly helpful. So in your emergency kit, you definitely should have a multi-tool like this and know exactly where your emergency kit is so you can go and grab that and grab this tool during a power outage or an emergency. Now, when you're camping, you can use something like this. This is a little heavy. So there are a couple other variations to this, a couple other designs that are a little bit lighter, kind of depending on what type of camping that you're doing. Once you start carrying around a multi-tool on you, you just be surprised by how often you end up actually using it. And I think that a good multi-tool is definitely an important item in your home emergency kit. And it's definitely very useful when you're out camping as well. So the next item on the list is going to be hand warmers. And yes, I do bring hand warmers with me when I go camping. I can't tell you how many times I've misjudged how cold it gets at nighttime while camping, especially with hammock camping where you can oftentimes get a breeze flowing underneath of your hammock. Uh, and having some hand warmers there can really make a huge, huge difference. And likewise, when you're in an emergency situation, you don't really know what type of emergency that is. If you're without power, whatever the temperature is outside, that's most likely going to be pretty close to what the temperature is inside. Great example is that we recently had that winter power outage in Texas where they're experiencing below freezing temperatures for a week, some people even longer than that. And I can guarantee you many of those people would have loved to have some hand warmers in their homes for those freezing cold nights. Psychologically, hand warmers are just an incredibly comforting item to have, but also physiologically, right? Frostbite is a very real thing and having one of those in each of your mittens or in each of your boots can literally prevent frostbite and other issues that arise from freezing cold temperatures. The next item on the list is going to be a headlamp. So I'll be honest, I really don't have that many flashlights in my camping equipment or in my emergency kit. Instead, I have headlamps and I have lanterns, right? Lanterns provide an omnidirectional light that will light up an entire area and headlamps are allow me to be hands-free gives me that directional light but I don't have to sacrifice one of my hands in order to have that light there's nothing more frustrating when you are holding a flashlight but you need two hands to do something whether it's cooking food or going to the bathroom and that's where having a good headlamp comes in and they even have designs like this can literally just clip onto the front of your hat as well but just being able to free up both your hands when you're camping, let's say, or you're hiking in the dark, that is really, really important to have both hands free, especially because of all the tripping hazards if you're hiking or walking around at dark. But during a disaster, if you're playing around with your circuit breaker or you're trying to cook food on a propane burner, having both hands free is incredibly useful and important, I think. And that's why I really don't have that many flashlights. I have a lot of lanterns and I have a lot of headlamps. And a headlamp is definitely an item that you can justify buying for camping and hiking and also having in your emergency kit. So the next item on the list is going to be freeze dried meals. Remember earlier in the video, I was talking about how psychologically having a warm meal can be very, very comforting. It can also really fill you up as well and give you some variety in the types of food that you're eating. When you're out camping or during an emergency situation, you could just eat ramen noodles the entire time, but that's not gonna give you very much nutrients or energy. And psychologically, you're probably gonna get pretty tired of that pretty quickly. And that's where these freeze dried meals come in, right? You boil some water in your propane burner, you add it to the freeze dried meal, and you've got chicken and gravy, or you've got lasagna, or you've got bacon and eggs. You've got some sort of variety in your food and psychologically it is incredibly comforting. And so you can buy a bunch of individually packaged meals like this for when you're going out camping. If you only need one meal to bring with you when you're camping, maybe for the evening time or maybe for the breakfast time, you could buy an individual package like this. Or if you wanna focus more on your emergency kit, you can buy something like this, which is a 72 hour kit for a small family and has 16 servings of a variety of freeze dried meals. Especially if you have a family, having a variety of different freeze dried meals is gonna help your family and help you and your kids psychologically get through this stressful situation. So I definitely think that having some freeze dried meals like that or some emergency food like that is a good item to have in your emergency kit. And when you go out camping, that's your time to kind of test out the different meals, see which ones you like, it kind of get some experience and show your kids how to actually prepare these freeze dried meals in an emergency if they had to. 
So next item on the list is going to be a first aid kit. And again, this is not one of those more glamorous or fun items, but it's definitely something important that you should have in your emergency kit. And you should also have one when you go out camping. And I'll be honest, you really don't need an elaborate kit as long as you have a basic kit to take care of the essentials. Sometimes you'll see like a 100 piece first aid kit or a 200 piece first aid kit that have, you know, sutures and scissors and all these other things. And for the vast majority of the time, you don't need any of that stuff. Just a basic first aid kit will get you through 90% of the situations that emerge. And a lot of times when these first aid kits have a lot of these additional items, you know, you as like an average Joe that doesn't have much experience or knowledge in terms of first aid, you're not gonna know how to use most of that stuff anyway. You really just need something to temporarily help family out, right? You need some gauze and some bandages to cover up some wounds to get them back to the hospital, let the hospital stitch them up. But having a first aid kit that you can bring with yourself camping as well as keeping your emergency kit, I think is a great idea. So the next item on the list is going to be some paracord. And this again, is just one of those simple general purpose items that you can find a lot of uses for in an emergency situation or when you're out camping. When I'm out camping, I always use paracord to string up my bear bag, right? You put all your food in a bag, you throw it up over a branch, and keep it up high so bears and other animals can't get access to it. But I oftentimes just find uses for paracord. Maybe one of the cords on my hammock or my tarp breaks and I need to replace it. Maybe I want to hang my backpack up off the ground and I rig something up with some paracord uh, hanging it from a tree. There's just a lot of little things that can go wrong where having some cordage, having some rope can really come in handy. Same thing during a disaster situation. You're just gonna find a lot of little times that you just need to attach two items and having some rope or some paracord is gonna allow you to do that. So it's just kind of a good, simple, general purpose item to bring with you and go camping and also have in your home emergency kit. So now that you know what the top 10 camping items are that you can also use during a disaster situation, check out this video right here where I break down the 15 items that FEMA wants you to keep in your home. Don't forget to subscribe for more prepping and survival videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you over in the next video.